uh, in this video we are going to create a simple example of job scheduler so create a new android studio project specify application name uh, i name it as job scheduler demo uh, select an md activity Now here the project is almost created. So here the project is created now. So the job scheduler API available on Android Lollipop onwards. So the first thing we have to change the minimum SDK version of this Android Studio project. So open Gradle file, go to module level Gradle file. So here the current minimum SDK version is 15. I'm going to change that one into 21 because job scheduler API is available from API version 21 onwards. So now seeing the project. Now here the project thing finishes. Yes, now the project build successful and uh, now close this one so now we can make the UI of the application so here the current root element is a constraint layout so for easiness I'm going to change that one into a relative layout there is no need of this text view So for starting a job, here I am going to add a button. Now we need to another button for stop the job. Now select the first button, change ID into B1. Now change the text of the button. I name it as schedule job. Uh, now specify an on click method for the button I specify the on click method as schedule job uh, now select the second button change id into b2 now change the text clear job and now specify an on click method for the button and name it as clear job okay this is the ui of the application now go to the xml file so now we need to specify these two on click method inside main activity java so here I specify the first method schedule job. Now here is the second method clear job. Okay. So now uh, suppose we are going to do a long running background operation. So it is not a good programming practice to place a long running operation on the main thread. So if the background task is a big one you have to create you have to place it on a separate thread so for the background operation here i am going to use an async task so create a new class create a new java class i specify the class name as m job executor and this class extends async task uh, for convenience First here I specify void as the generic type of the async task. So you have to specify three generic type. Now here you need to override one method. You need to override a do in background method. 
So here the return expected return type is a string value. So here the return type of this method is a string. So from this method, here I'm going to return some simple string value. A background a long running task finishes. So this is our background operation. So we create an async task that return a string value. Now uh, we can schedule the job using job scheduler. So the job scheduler need a class that extends job service. So here I am going to create another class. I specify the class name as M job scheduler. And this class extends job service. So here you need to implement two methods on start job and on stop job. So when the time arrives, the system call the on start job for the background job. So you can place your background job within this method. So here I create some variables for the async task. Here it is M job executor. Now from the on start job, I'm going to initialize that variable M job executor equal to new M job executor. So here I'm going to override another method of async task on post execute. So here the result is a string value. So here I am going to display the string using a toast. Uh, get application context. Now display the string. Specify the length of the talks and name it as I will specify that one belong. And finally display the toast. So if you place your background job on a separate thread, you have to return true from the on start job method. So here we place our job on async task that means a separate thread so we have to return true from this method and finally we can execute the async task so m job executor and call the execute method on async task so if you return true from the on start job method you have to call a method called the job finished. Otherwise, the system assumes that your job is still running in a separate background thread. So here we place our job on a separate thread. So we have to call the job finished method on the job thread. So from the on post execute method, I'm going to call the method job finished. So this method need two parameters. First, first one is the job parameters itself and the second parameter is a boolean so if you want to reschedule the same job again you can return true otherwise you can return false so now comes to the second method on stop job if the job is interrupted before finish this method will be invoked so from this method you can clear all the unfinished job so here our job is an async task so here I am going to call the cancel method on the async task. If you want to reschedule the job again, you can return true, otherwise you can return false. So this is our job service class. Now we need to register the job service class inside manifest file. So open android manifest.xml. Here create a new service tag, specify the class name. So here you need to specify a special permission. Here the permission is employee permission bind job service. To make the service private, employee exported into true. 
okay so now the job service is ready so for this application here we have to specify some permission I need a boot completed permission now I have to check the network state access network state so these are the two permission needed by this application now close android manifest.xml now go to main activity dot java first here i am going to create some variables private static final job id now specify the job id now create another variable variable for job scheduler now create another variable for job info now we need to create the job and we have to specify the job parameters or job conditions for that first i'm going to create a component name for the service A new component name the constructor need two parameter first one is the context now specify the service class here the service class is m job scheduler and now we can create a job info builder object we can specify the job parameters or conditions using the job builder object so job info dot builder i name it as builder new builder and for this method you have to pass two parameter first one is the job id and second one is the service component name here the job id available on this available job id now specify the service component name now we can specify our job conditions using this builder object so builder dot set periodic into 5000 that means this job executed every 5 seconds now specify another condition suppose this job need some network connection so here i am going to use this method set required network type job info dot here you have many options network type any metered type none type not roaming and metered etc so here i need any network for the operation so now i'm going to use another condition set persisted into true that means this job will be exit this job exist even after a system reboot and finally we can get the job info object from the builder so we can simply call the build method on the builder object so now the job is ready now we can schedule the job so for schedule the job we have to initialize the job scheduler get system service here it is job scheduler service uh, you have to type cast that one into job scheduler so now the job and job scheduler is ready now we can schedule it so now i'm going to schedule the job on the on click method schedule job so job scheduler dot we can simply call this method schedule and pass the job info object so here display some message job scheduled specify the length of the task and finally make it visible so if you want to cancel the job again we can use the job scheduler object and you can call the cancel method 
to cancel a particular job you can call the cancel method if you want to cancel all the job on the job scheduler you can call the cancel all method so here we have only one job so here I am going to call the cancel method so for cancelling a particular job you have to pass the job ID here also display a message Our job cancelled uh, now we can test our application uh, run the application uh, select a virtual device now here the application available on this virtual device now I am going to schedule the job now the job is scheduled so now the job executed so from now onwards the job will execute every 5 seconds the job will execute in the background even if the application is not in the foreground ok now I am going to stop the job so open that application again the job is still running in the background now I am going to stop the job now the job is cancelled. So this is how we are using job scheduler to schedule a background job for the application. I hope you understand all the concepts. Please subscribe this channel for getting more Android tutorial updates.